Welcome to Hey Man, I am Josh. I am Jacob. Hey man. Hey man, what's up? Well, first of all, I'm thinking about leaving the Jeffrey Dahmer serial killer glasses on for the whole show. What do you think? What do I think about you leaving them on or what do I think about them, period? Um, let's go with both. Uh, I would say to leaving them on, I guess it's your choice, your life. Yep. Yeah. Is that the answer for both of them? And for you wearing them, I would say it is your choice, your life for that as well. Double. However, yeah, I'm gonna. It's gonna be a no for me, dog. <laughs> you went Randy Jackson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <facts. laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I can't tell you how much I love saying that. And people are like, "What is yeah. that?" Because some people either know it right away, dude. You went straight Randy Jackson. Some That's a no for me, dog. People either know it right away or they're like, "What is that?" And I'm like, iconic. It, I'm like, if you don't know what that is, iconic. We, I don't know if we can talk. Like, iconic. Yeah. Uh, for, first of all, a couple things. Um, I've had a couple people reach out to me. Well, I have so many things I want to talk about. I wish I had written them down. Does anybody have a Matt, do you have a pen over there? Um, so first of all, comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. Um, guys, write it on your phone. I will. We're in Kansas City this week. Uh, we are in Columbia, Missouri, St. Louis, Missouri next week. Nashville as well. Uh, nope. Oh no, Nashville. We're in Mohegan Sun in Connecticut the week after. We're in Nashville on the 17th and Phoenix at the end of the year. Guys, these are all huge markets for us. These shows will sell out. Please come. They are going to be a ton of fucking fun. That New Year's Eve weekend, <laughs> that, I have that. a lot of fun surprise guests coming in. We're going to do some, yeah, we're going to do some fun shit. So um, we might rumor, we might have a full band. Oh, it might be, yeah. Well, I'm going to full band for what? I haven't decided yet. Anyways, ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates. Also, hey, thank you guys. So, I, you know what? I don't hate the Jeffrey Dahmers now that I'm looking, but they're, are they crooked? No, you just made them crooked. Um, Your uh, eyes might be crooked. Maybe. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everybody who listens to this. Um, thank you to the oldies. Thank you to the newbies. Got a lot of new um, eyeballs after our Matt Reif conversation um last week who knew dude by the way it's so amazing to me and i'm super happy for him by the way but you know anything you you mention his name in the title of something you you're going to get a ton of views yeah whether it's good or bad eyes but yeah, yeah it's like putting his name in anything is like any publicity is good publicity at this point i i, I do want to say a couple of things real quick um, and it was quite an, ex uh, um, an interesting social experiment for me posting that. And by the way, for those of you um, who are watching on YouTube, I'm getting more and more messages on my comedy and, and clips from Hey Man about how you, the algorithm is just not showing you my stuff. Uh -huh. And they're like, I didn't even know you were posting stand up anymore. Guys, I post and not. Crowd work stuff. I do post some crowd work. Yeah. But I post stand-up, new stand-up, it, it, e either every week or every other week. Mm -hmm. I'm not precious about holding on to my material. It's there, man. Facebook, too. Um, I, for a little while, I was doing these compilation videos on there. Did you see them? Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to do them anymore. Um, I wanted the compilation videos. I like weird and kind of borderline. That's a video we shouldn't be watching. Right. Clips. And they were, they ended up being just a little too soft for me. So I'm going to take them down until I can find something that feels like it's more my speed, just more my voice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. That's what I'm interested in is when you come to my page or on my YouTube that you know what you're going to say. Right. Which is weird, funny, silly shit. Um, but this social experiment with Matt was very interesting to me. And it's told me how. It showed me um, how far I've come emotionally with what I, I guess what I would call emotional intelligence. Because uh, I think that's basically the term for how in control you are. Right. Of, right. I will say this. If you, depending on if you watched the short one minute clip or the nine minute clip mm -hmm. talking about, you probably got different things away. Yeah, there, there's a lot of context that is missed. Sure. 
from the nine minute clip to the one minute clip. Yep, the one yep, minute yep. clip is your main points, but the nine minute clip really gives like an all around better explanation of, but, of, of, of what we were talking about. But reading the comments was, and I, guys, I, 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 I want to let you know, I went through as much as I can and, and erased people saying negative shit or name calling I I I don't have time to go through and erase all of it. But yeah, when, I, yeah. when I saw something, I was like, "That's it's just not necessary." There were a couple out of pocket comments. Yep, and I will say, part of that is my fault for how it was cut. Yes, because I did call people touchy pussies. Now, yeah. I want to make clear, I was not calling people who are the victims of domestic violence touchy pussies. In the longer clip, that is very evident. Yep. Yep. And I, when I was saying you don't get to pick and choose, what you don't get to pick and choose is what you get to pick and choose what you think is funny. You don't get to pick and choose what other people find funny. That's right. That's right. And what was really cool, interesting to me is, is messages from people who have been fans of mine for a long time. I recognize their names. And it's quick. It's so funny how quickly people turn. Maybe it was like, yeah, typical. I should have known by the dumb shit you and your son talk about. Stick to t one question was stick to talking about sweatshirts. <laughs> <laughs> it made me fucking laugh. But I will tell you what I meant by how far I've come emotionally. In the past, I would have let that. I would have gone in like, yeah, dude, you know, I would have said something like, OK, but you're still following me and on my page. Mm -hmm. So like, you know what I mean? It's called fan behavior is what we call that. But here's what alarmed me. What alarmed me, and, and as I've grown out of it, what alarms me a little bit is how easily manipulated people are. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, that doesn't even mean necessarily manipulated to do my bidding, but I can make you feel a certain way just by words. Mm-hmm. I can make you feel a certain way just by saying, I don't agree with you. Because when you're mad at me, when people are mad at me, when they were mad in those comment sections at other people, basically they're mad because they're saying, I'm mad because you don't think the way I think. Right. And I think it's just a bummer. I, 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 I just do. Like, we have to be able to have some civil discourse. and. I want to make it one more time super, super clear. Guys, nobody thinks domestic violence, well, nobody who isn't a scumbag, thinks domestic violence is funny. Mm -hmm. However, that doesn't mean you can't make funny domestic violence jokes. Right. I, I, in no way, shape, or form, think the Holocaust is funny. Some of you might. Right? Maybe a but, good portion of people. But... We don't think the Holocaust is funny, but man, I've heard some funny Holocaust jokes. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, there, there's, there's, this been is a, what I'm saying. There's been a couple like my, <laughs> can I tell you one of my favorite, my favorite ones while we're here on yeah. the topic of insensitive jokes? It's a Family Guy episode. And obviously, you know, Seth MacFarlane is just, by the way, if you're a cartoon, apparently you can say, say anything, whatever you yeah. want. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, it's so weird. It's not like there's a real person's voice behind the car. It's just a cartoon. They can say whatever they want. It's, yeah, but so it was, uh, I don't remember what the lead up to the, because you know how Family Guy, they're like, oh, this is almost like the time where this and this, and it cuts to like, it sets up a flashback, right? And it's a bunch of, uh, it's a bunch of uh, uh, Jews during the Holocaust walking into what I assume is a gas chamber. Mm. And the guy at the front of the line stops and he looks at the guard and he goes, wouldn't be a, 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 I take it this is a bad time to tell you I have a note from my doctor. And the, and the Nazi with the gun, he goes, he laughs, he goes, ah, oh, get in there, you. Like, <laughs> like that shit for me is yeah. so funny. Like, a doctor's note Yo, at the entrance dude. to a gas chamber is the, crazy. But the very, that ahead. is so, but that still for me is like. It's a funny joke. Oh my God, it's so funny. It's a funny joke, guys. It's a funny joke. I can't. Guys, guys. Look, man, I, I, uh, I have both of, I'm the only person in, in my, out of my siblings that married a white woman. woman. Correct. Right. Also, and I've made this clear to Jonathan and, and Danny, I'm also, that means I'm the only one left in the will, but fucked. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but, but 
y- you know, I, I, and growing up, my best friends, dude named Alan Jackson, Odeo Fry. Odeo? Odeo Fry. Well, how do you spell Odeo? Uh, Odeo is O D E Y O. Odeo. It's a cool name. It's like rodeo without yeah, dude. the R. Both, it, both black guys. Like, uh, 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 but man, let me tell you something. The very first family guy I ever watched, Stewie was going to the hospital and he collapsed. He's like, uh, take me to the hospital. He collapsed. I like your Stewie voice. And there was a long pause. And then he just took his head up. He goes, but make sure the doctor isn't black. And he went back to, right? <laughs> Dude. Look, man. Racism is not funny. That joke, funny. Super funny. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's again, it's intent. Intent. Uh, it's, it's, by it's, the way, is the joke funny? Is the joke Funny. We, you can all pretend to be incredibly <gasps> and clutch your pearls, but every one of you have, have laughed. And I don't know if it makes you feel better because your friend told you the joke or you laughed behind closed doors, but every one of you have laughed at a joke that you would not tell in public. Okay? That's us every in the green room every weekend. Single. <sighs> f- you know, if you could be in the writer's room, of your of your favorite, yo, find your favorite woke show, everybody. And I don't like the term woke because it, it, it there's a negative. It, I don't like that. Yeah, even just find your favorite. Find your show. favorite show where you think Period. these th- these people are not. Yo, that writers' room is it's, saying the worst things that have ever been spoken out loud in the vicinity of anything. Did like, I tell you, like dude. yo, like that? Well, yo, the. That was kind of what I mean. No, I probably shouldn't bring up the it's just the, the previous shows I've worked on. But yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah, but there was there was one previous show I worked on where I could only imagine the things that were said in the writers' room that it got to be a certain point to where people felt uncomfortable that the head writer had to get let go. Yeah, dude. And I was like, yo, it's the writers' room. Like this is how this works. Jacob like, Wolf. This is this is this is it, this is where the magic happens. Chelsea was on from... Uh, she was on for like seven or eight years, something like that. Yeah, but I'm trying to find... Uh, it, ended two, it ended 2014 because I was 17 at the time. So, so 2007, 2014. If you could have heard the things being said in that writer's room. Yo, dude, forget the writer's room. It's such... We're, we're, everybody on that show <laughs> is so lucky that E took all of that stuff down. We would all be canceled. <laughs> We, she would not be able to do anything. No, no. no we no. would all be canceled. Yeah. The things that were said, the things that were done were bananas. Yeah. It, it, I, I just want to say, guys, you are allowed to decide for yourself what is acceptable. Yeah. You're allowed to decide for yourself. But what was a clear indication that there's no line is that there were more domestic violence survivors saying, I didn't mind the joke, or we have to learn to laugh, that's how we heal, or any number of things. Or there were some who were like, hey, I don't mind the the domestic violence jokes. I just didn't think that one was funny. Yeah. By the way, Fair. No, nobody's saying you have to think Matt's funny, or any of us. Mm-hmm. But it's art. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Anyways. But then also, uh, to round that off, whether you're, you know, whether you found it funny or not, and you went into the comments and you were just like, hey, I just I just never really found him funny or didn't find that joke funny. Perfect. It doesn't, and I will say this, not in defense of those people, but it, them leaving their opinion on that doesn't open the floor for everybody to no, come out and be like, not. hey, you're stupid. Oh, you're obviously like, didn't uh, take, he didn't take comedy lessons from you, this and that, this and that. Like, there was one specific woman on your post who just got getting uh, yeah. Rampage. And I'm going to take a little responsibility for that in how that clip was cut. Just because it, it if you weren't paying attention or, had, or really didn't see the full nine minutes. But if you weren't paying attention, because on my clip, I never called you a pussy for not thinking it was funny. Right? right. I, I, and, and, I sh- and I opened the door for insults with that minute clip. Yeah. And, and I, by the way, I never want to be that person. Right. I, I actually really want to be a person who bridges these two 
groups together who sparks a conversation but also mm -hmm. can spark like a civil conversation mm -hmm. between two parties because that but because i really feel like that's what it is and, and it's so funny in today's society there were people on the page who, like i said who have been fans forever who are like unfollow and i'm like by the way guys not nobody you're not going to agree 100 percent with anybody no and if you do that's called a cult and it's yeah. very on uh unhealthy very unhealthy i saw some people on my page who left comments like that's right or fuck yeah and i know for a fact there are some jokes that would make them say too far i know one of the people everybody's got a line but but that, that which is my point which is just draw the line for yourself but just don't draw it for other people 100 percent. that's all um listen man Sorry, don't mind me and the sniffles again, everybody. I That's apologize. okay, dude. But by, by the way, dude, the size of the mushrooms I have. For oh, our, I saw you sent you showed me the photo last time we were here. This is gonna be a catastrophic weekend with I, Lee Syatt. I can't wait. I cannot wait. I I love Lee. By the way, you um, the this is now last week where you were in the furry time. No, Adventure Time it was the week before. Adventure time. <laughs> furry Adventure Time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> By the way, I think a furry time jacket would be scary. Yo, bro, furry time would be amazing. What time is it? Furry time. And someone just like transforms like a Power Ranger into a furry and suit. And they just start having sex with rabbits. Rabbits? What? Don't furries have sex with other furry people? Or not. That's what a furry is. A furry is someone who dresses up in another, as an animal. Correct. Yes. But, but they have sex with each other in other furry costumes. Uh, they could. Yes. No, no, no. That's the whole thing. If you're just somebody who wears a bunny rabbit outfit, you're not a furry. The idea of the furry is that they have People sex with other furries. To other, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you know how much those suits cost? No. A lot. How much? Dude, I was watching an interview and this this person didn't even have like a full suit. They just had like a head on and and like I'm gonna call them mittens because they're just they look yeah, like paws, yeah. right? And that they're like, so how much does this kind of stuff cost? They're like, well, a full suit can range anywhere between like good quality from like two to five thousand dollars. And I was like, holy shit! But they're getting jizz on that. Yeah. And then they were like, and they're like, all right, but you only have like a headgear. Like, how much does the headgear cost? And he was like, oh, this one costs twelve hundred dollars. And I was like, wow, dude. Let me just say something right now. If I'm paying five grand for a suit, you, you're not getting jizz on that fucking thing. There's no way. Well, if you're paying five grand for a suit, the only jizz that would be on it is yours. So, that's a, yeah. I don't want my jizz on it either. Yeah, you just said you don't want jizz. I'm just. I was just clarifying for. I for appreciate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. want my jizz. I don't want anyone's jizz. Yeah, yeah. But especially just, somebody else's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> definitely not mine either. Like, I, if I'm paying five thousand dollars or something, it's that's, jizz free. That's more what I was aiming for. I yeah. was like, I don't. Uh, you should. Yeah, I don't know. Not any jizz specifically and only you don't want yours on there because that's the only type that may end up on it. I want to say something else. Listen, if, if I'm getting jizz on something, it's a hundred dollars and under a hundred dollars and over is jizz free. hundred dollars is too much for it to have jizz on it too. <laughs> I'm not spending a bill for something to be covered in jizz. What are we yeah, talking but about? What if, what if some, what if you had a hoodie? Uh, I don't know. Why would your hoodie have jizz on it? I don't know. Who has sex with their clothes on nowadays? The fuck nowadays. Oh, I mean, like, look. Did were, you think, like, in the old times, we we stay, we just went dick out and just kind of ripped a hole? No, but I mean, like, I, I used to have sex with clothes on. That's why I'm saying that. Or, like, you know, sometimes stuff happens too fast where you just don't have the time to, like, get all of your articles of clothing off. Yeah, but that or, still happens. Or, or it has to be super quick, so you have to keep all your clothes on so that you can just pop out and be good Wait, to go. Are you, are you in high school? In the high school? In, like, I mean, in I, high school? I, not at high school, you fucking mad, but like when I was in high school. What, because you thought your mom and I were coming home? No, or like we were in a car or like, by the so, way, somewhere else. I'm or, just going to say this in high, and, I, and that was the thing in high school. Never a fan of car sex. Yeah, the only one, the only car that I ever really got into for that was a Mini Cooper, and that never really worked well for me. Well, you're seven foot eight. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's a small car. Not yeah. a lot of movement in that no. one. Yeah, yeah. I remember I had a station wagon in high school and I tried the backseat down sex one time. And like, but I got my knees had all these rug burn stuff on it. It doesn't work. Ah, not I'm not a fan. No. I'm not a fan of the car. I'm not a fan of outdoor. 
Out, out, outdoor sex. That's never been my thing either. Nah, one time one girl was like, let's have sex on the beach. And I was like, how about not? I've done she, that. She was like, why not? And I go, um, sand in places that I don't want, nor do you probably want. On top of that, again, you're back to the, you're you're really doing a lot of friction on the knees. And yeah, it was not. I remember I did it one time, um, freshman year in college, freshman year in college. I was a bit of a meathead. And um, I do know that I, I, my goal was to do ecstasy every night and to have sex every night. I'm going to go ahead and take a guess that one of those things was pretty consistent. I had to. Take, when I mean one of those things, I mean, the ecstasy was pretty consistent. I had the to sex take wasn't. a night break from the ecstasy because my brain was fried, not working fried, dude, not Working. Fried. My friend said to me, straight up, hey, and this is like a 19-year-old college kid in the 90s. Yeah. So no, no reference for what really is good for you or not. He just looked at me. He goes, hey. I said, yeah. He goes, you should take a night off. And I said, why? He goes, your brain's not working. Nope. He, I was like, what do you mean? He goes, well, some, you'll say something. Like it's a full sentence, but it doesn't make any sense. It's words, but the words don't go together. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like stroke time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know our buddy uh, Benzel? Yeah. Benny told me because he went to art school, art college, which isn't really school for those of you who don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> shout out my boy Benzel. But he was telling me how like there was a legit, there was a, a, a month where him and his buddy, or like a month and a half straight where they did acid. Every day. No, that'll scramble your fucking brain. Well, look at Benzel now. That makes sense. Dude, I have uh, a friend of mine. Love you, Ben. By the way, this is no no shade whatsoever. Love you. But uh, that, that I couldn't even... When he told me that, I couldn't even imagine my life consistently for a month acid influence. That sounds painful. Jacob, dude I know. I'm not going to mention any names. Dude I know was the most analytical, straight-ahead, logic-driven... Dude, of all time, did too much acid one night. And when he came through, he all of a sudden could write these amazing scripts. He is now a guy that people all over Hollywood and the biggest names send to rewrite scripts, write scripts, punch up scripts. Does he do acid and then do it? He doesn't do acid anymore. Aww. But he said his brain never went back. Now, he still has some of that logic. He was like, it's such a weird combo now. Usually, you're one or the other. I still have some of that logic, which helps me with the script in a way. Right, right, right. He said, but I'm so much more creative than I ever was. Does he still have some of that acid? I asked him that. He does not. Damn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew you. I love how that was my first question. You're like, ah, I already of asked him I that asked question. Him, of course. I was like, Dan, I would love to write a killer script. Can you? Hit I me would with love it? to. Uh, I would love to do something like that. Could you? Uh... Well, we're gonna do that this weekend with one of those mushrooms, <sighs> dude. Those mushrooms are as long as my hand, dude. They're large. Uh, I, I, I. By the way, everybody, if you want to see any of my mushroom shows, they're for free. I, I, they're not on my YouTube page or on Facebook, but they're for free on punchup.live slash Josh Wolf. It's free. They're free hour sets. It's free comedy. I'm not charging you guys. Oh, and I'm and I'm recording my special in January in Vancouver. You um yeah, you psyched for that? Oh, yeah. and and uh hey man pod with three A's, hey man pod with three A's at gmail.com is the email. Send us some questions in there. I know you had some things you wanted to talk about. I have a couple of things I want to talk about today, too. Uh, truthfully, like my first thing on my list was to kind of backtrack on the on the on the Matt Reif clip, but we did that right off the bat. Without but by even, the way, we're not backtracking. Not backtracking because what I still believe, again, out of all of it, is the intention behind it. I just think that that clip, how it was cut, seemed a little abrasive towards people who wouldn't have found, who didn't find it funny for whatever reason. They didn't find it funny. I, I, I but, will say that the people, and I understand how they got there. But if you listen to my words, yep. specifically, I'm just saying you don't get to choose what we think is funny. Right, 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 right. right, okay. right. And so, but we've we've covered that, yep, and yep. I think we went back on that, so that's all good. Um, I would like to talk about my girlfriend for a second because a couple things happened uh, this week that made me laugh. Okay. Um, so, first off, and we had Thanksgiving in LA, obviously, this past week. Yeah. Uh, great which time. was a whole bunch of fun. Had yep. a really good time. Saw some friends. 
Had a couple drinks. Ate some pecan pie. Pecan pie. Those and then those those Del- pumpkin bars. Sure, it made delicious. Good Lord. Uh, but on the drive back from LA to Vegas, uh, me and Amon were in the car and we we're listening to music and. Her head kind of hurt a little bit, and I was like, do you want some Tylenol? She goes, yeah, where is it? And I'm obviously looking at the road, and I don't know that she had already turned her head to go look for the Tylenol in the back. And without missing a beat, the because I have to lean back with my right arm to reach over. Yeah. And the first thing I do is I turn without looking, and I swing my arm back like that, and I caught her right in the face with an elbow, like, yes. like square square right right on the side of the face right under the eye and legit like i started apologizing fucking matt reifter bro i was literally <laughs> gonna say that that's so funny <laughs> you I, gave her a matt rife to the gave, face i gave her i gave her a one two matt rife <laughs> <laughs> and so as i hit her i was like oh my god i'm so sorry because it wasn't like one of those love taps that one like oh, there was it. makeup on my Hoodie. No. That's how hard I hit oh, her. You ca- oh, oh dude. I, you know, you I, stuck the land. I rocked her shit. Oh, no. And so I turned, but like that happened, and she immediately just didn't say a thing, turned around, and just stared forward out of the car for like five straight minutes and mm-hmm. didn't say a word. Was she and, unconscious? No. Oh. God damn. And so she's sitting there, and I was like, will you say something, please? I'm just sitting here freaking out. She goes, yeah, I'm just trying to... to, to to, Get my shit together. Yeah, and yeah. take in what just happened. Then I go, you wanted me to take in what just happened? I just rocked your shit. <laughs> That's Jeez. what just happened. And I and I look at her and I go, hey, uh, you still want that Tylenol? <laughs> she was like, yeah. Like, Does she have a black eye? She didn't have one right away, which I was like, okay, thank God. I didn't hit her that hard. Like she didn't have the she didn't have yeah. the raccoon eye right away. Next morning we woke up. She was like, hey. I feel a little swollen this morning. How do I look? And I looked at her and I was like, oof. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I was like, little swelling for sure. Not bad discoloration. I was like, you just look tired on both your eyes. And she was like, okay. And then next morning we woke up and she goes, I still feel a little swollen. And I go, you look way more tired on the eye that I hit you on the other eye. <laughs> she goes, what? And I go, you got, I go, you got, you got, you got a little shiner. You got, you got a little, a little something, something. Dude. Right the eye. By the way, she goes, What do you mean? I go, You just look way more tired on your right eye than you do on your left. She goes, Is it that noticeable? I was like, Well, I see you every day. So, like, I know what the black eye looks like. Also, I'm not going to lie. I was kind of waiting to see how good of a black eye it was because I hit you fucking oh, hard dude, in the car. That is so, so that, that made that me. Is- that made me giggle. I'm just glad we didn't have to go out in public with it because it's so hard to. Ex- it's like you walk around and then people look at you weird and you're like, Oh, yeah, tell them how. You know, what am I supposed to say? Tell him how I accidentally elbowed you in the face yeah, while and we were the in the more, car. The more you try to explain it out loud. The in front worse of it sounds. Dude, it's like when your kid has a bruise that's really visible and you go to like the grocery store or you're somewhere in public at line and people just see your kid with a giant bruise. You, I mean, as a parent, you're always like... um, you Tell, try to say extra, extra loudly like, it was weird when he fell off that slide, right? Weird when he fell off the slide? It makes it extra weird the fact that you try to point it out in public. In yeah, but there's no way because people are looking. That's why you you just gotta you just gotta you just gotta let it rock. You could also just say, oh yeah, he does. He wanted to do boxing, so he does UFC like like kid UFC for fun or yeah, something like that. It's so sus. No matter what you do, yeah. it's fucking like total remember sus. when we went to freaking Big Bear and mom got clapped by that Asian woman on the oh on the, oh, on the, the fucking on the, on the the what is that called? We, we were inner tubing, inner tubing, tubing. Yeah, and in the snow mom, down the hill, and yeah, she got her legs well, just. Mom, mom went down and got down the hill, and the woman behind her didn't wait. So by the time mom turned around, this woman was coming full speed at her and just. Absolutely. Your mom stood up and the woman's tube just hit her legs. And mom's legs went and then your mom's face just bat right yeah, into the she snow. Got, she got rocked. Yo, dude. But I remember the whole weekend we were walking around and I was like, Dad, why is everybody looking at us? And you were like, they think I hit your mother. And I was like, what? But you didn't. They go, yeah, it's not something we can really matter. get around. Yeah, it's yeah. just, it's every, nobody wants to think that of other people. But you but can't you know, help but think it when you see it right in front of your face. Your mom was like, yeah, I'm, when we go out and you turn and look at me, I'm going to flinch. I go, don't <laughs> fucking, don't you fucking flinch. She's like, I'm going to flinch. I have a that black eye. That is so funny. She's like, I'm going to black eye. I have a black eye. I'm going to flinch or I'm going to cower when you talk to me. I'm like, don't you that fucking is do that. so funny. But it's, I, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. But again, I bet you there's some people listening who are like, that, that would be, that's pretty, you know, but just depending yeah. on what you think. Is so I also, so also one more thing to say about her. She makes me laugh. We, uh, so we Iman. went, yeah, we went and saw Hunger Games last night. The new How one. was it? Honestly, I heard mixed reviews about it, but truthfully, ah, uh, I didn't mind it. I'm, I, I wouldn't go see it again. That bitch was long. It was like two and a half hours. We okay. at like 10 PM okay. and didn't get out till one. It's the prequel. It's supposed to be the prequel. So you know President Snow in the in the regular movies, he's the guy who like Donald runs Sutherland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's backstory on him, and it's like a prequel of like how he was raised and how he kind of came about and the start of the Hunger Games and what they progressed into and the meaning behind them. Is and there going to be three of these or just one? I hope not, dude. I don't need more of that. Like, okay. What, but also, lead, go you know going into it, leading up to it, we watched all of the Hunger Games in a row. So there was like, there obviously it was Hunger Games number one. Catching Fire was part two, and then it was Mockingjay one and two. Mockingjay one and two were so boring. I mean, Can so you stop it. So no, that like for me the thing was like I really do like how the movie, like that's how the books were. But obviously I'm illiterate and I don't read, so <laughs> so I, I know the books. That's how the story went. But seeing it in the movies, like I really did like how it developed and it kind of always had that underlying tone of like societal oppression in that yeah. first one, which is the whole thing because they make 12 to 18 year olds go kill each other in a ring, yeah. which is beyond whatever. Yeah. But the fact that it kind of progressed into like overthrowing, you know, overthrowing the, 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 the dictatorship and the revolution and, and then, but still like underlying tones of the revolution still isn't what it seems to be. Like, I like how it progressed as a storyline. I did enjoy that. I just thought that Mockingjay part one and two were just, were a little slow. Like, okay. it just like, it felt like there was a lot of things in between that I didn't really, yeah. I didn't feel like was needed. I do really like, this is a spoiler for anybody who hadn't seen all four of the Hunger Games, but then they've been out since 2015, so... Yeah, dude, whatever. You don't have to explain yourself. I do love how it was like when they when they rescued Katniss, but left Peta, and then Peta went to the Capitol, and then was kind of like brainwashed and transformed, and then we see him, and then he tries to kill yep. Katniss. Yep. I like that. By the way, that scene at the end, like I was like, yo, her eyes are legit about to pop out of her head. Yeah, like, like that. It. That scene was really, mm -hmm. really, really real. Yep. And so I, I really like how they did it because it really does. It it really also like it really showed a, a lot of parallelism for for our world right now. So I I really did enjoy that. But I think it just shows a parallel. I don't think it shows parallelism. Yeah, you might be right. It shows yeah. a parallel. But so I I I enjoyed it. I thought the movie was pretty good. Um, I liked Snow's actor in it, Young Snow. He's a heartthrob. Apparently, he did look towards the end of the movie. Did look really good. I'm not gonna lie. Um. <laughs> Uh, the, the suit came up. The shaved head turned into better locks. I don't know. He had a little bit of a glow up through the entire movie. Okay. Um, the main girl. One problem I have is the movie practically started out with, again, with the, the reaping and like them picking people. But it started off with like her already singing, like how Katniss does in the other mm -hmm. movies. And I was like, like, are we already in a high school musical? Like it just kind of seemed crazy that we're already starting it out. It set the tone for who the character was. Yeah. And I understand that. But right as like it's kept going and like how long the song took, at one point, both me and Iman looked at each other at the same time and I was like, I mean, come on. Like, ah, we didn't need this. We, we did I this. Think, There's a lot of things that we just didn't need. Also, she was, she had a Southern accent. Listen, I think the world would be better if we all just started at times during the day, break out into the song. No, I just also didn't understand why she had a Southern accent. Cause no, you're just going to skim right over that. Yeah, I am. I skim right over it. Cause sometimes, sometimes first idea, best idea, but most of the time for you, it's first idea needs to go under the rug. So, <laughs> under the rug. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've never heard that saying under the rug. Like it needs to be slipped under the rug or swept under the rug. Slipped, swept, put mm. under the rug, mm. rolled up in a rug and buried, you know, whatever you want to call ah, it. Those are all different <laughs> things. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I just, I just, uh, I don't know. I I didn't think it was the greatest movie. Obviously, I still think the first Hunger Games is hard to beat. There's not a lot mm -hmm, better mm -hmm, than it. Mm -hmm. Then the second one's pretty good also. But uh, I, I liked it. I would say go see it if you like the Hunger Games movies. And it was entertaining. But it was almost three hours. So buckle up. It was, it was a long one. Yeah, they, I mean, the long movies don't. They don't bother me anymore. They were with the amount of bong rips I took before going to that movie. Did you take a bunch of bong rips? Good Lord. I haven't smoked 
I smoked. I took a couple hits on Monday night. By the way, Monday night show in Vegas, ton of fun. Everybody, yeah. make sure you come through and check that out. Every Monday night, seven thirty at uh, Jimmy Kimmel's Comedy Club. Mm -hmm. But I have been less on the smoke. I have not been really enjoying how my favorite edibles have been hitting me, which is really weird. You should get the Le they've been hitting me less high and just heavy and i don't like that yeah i think i'm gonna try and switch more to the edible train really yeah for a little bit i'm gonna just try it and see how i like it i'm obviously gonna keep herb like with some flour on me at all times because yeah. how come i don't know i just i feel like it's gonna be way cheaper for me more less expensive like because look I, at a certain point right now with smoking yeah, like we've talked about, I could only get so high. Me too. Which is why for me, I was like, oh, I'll just take a multitude of bong rips in a row. Yeah. And I'll be good by the time we get there. And I was just as high when I got there as when I left. And yeah. I was like, what am I, like, what's the point? Yeah, like, I agree. But if I take edibles, that high is going to be the stronger one that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Last longer, stuff like that, right? Obviously, for me, smoking is also just kind of like a little bit of a ritual for me at this point. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm still gonna smoke, but are I we think bringing I'm just, edibles to KC? I'm gonna bring some smoke to KC, also probably. Okay. But I'm probably gonna not gonna do backwards. I'll probably just do a joint. Um, um, but I'm sorry, I had one more thing on Iman before we go there. But so when we were watching a Hunger Games, um, I decided to take some mushrooms as well because I was really tired, and I was oh, like, shit, okay. uh, and I was like, if I smoke more. I'm going to go to sleep in the middle of this movie. But if I take like a gram, gram and a half of mushrooms, I'll be up and then be able to go to bed. And that's what we did. And mushrooms were pretty good. It was, it was fun. It made me stay up for the movie. But we're sitting there talking. And she does, she has like, you know how everybody has their own isms? Not the tism, but like isms. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. people say things that are like, uh, you know, correlated to them or like something they always say or mm -hmm, you hear mm -hmm. other people say. So she has this thing where everything has its own store. So it's like, Obviously, at the grocery store, you can get a whole bunch of things at the store, right? Mm -hmm. But if, like, we need one specific thing, like bread, she's like, oh, we need to go to the bread store. Or we need, like, when she was like, oh, I need some some, some medication, we need to go to the, to the whatever store. Not even CVS. It's like she'll say her medication in front of the store. Or, like, the weed store. The weed store, for some reason, makes me laugh. I don't know. Her, everything having its own store, like the mail store, mm -hmm. post office. The bread, oh, I thought you meant M-A-L-E. No, uh, no, the mail store, post office, yeah. the bread store, Target, the the medication store, CVS. Is Target the bread store? Yeah, oh, we get the best, the better sourdough bread from. Got it. Because I went somewhere else to get sourdough bread once, and it said extra sourdough bread on it, and I was like, What does that mean, extra sourdough? Fuck bread. if I know. I was like, extra sourdough, sourdough bread, good. Extra sourdough bread, probably good. Right. Bought it, brought it home. Guess what it was? White bread. How can it be extra sourdough? You know what it was? It that was, makes sense. you know what it was? It was huh. extra not sourdough because legit, I opened it up and it was just, I smelled it. It was a long piece of white bread with, it wasn't sourdough. And I was like, what the, f what is happening here? Dude. So that was dumb. I'm pretty mad at that. But so yeah, everything has its own <sighs> store, which makes me laugh. And we were sitting there. She was like, yeah, we need to go to the, we need to go to the, to this store. And I was like, the what? She goes, you know, CVS. And I'm like, oh, and I'm sitting there on mushrooms just fucking laughing my ass off. Because I'm like, why does everything have its own store? She goes, I don't know. Just because, you know. That would be great if everything just sold one thing. Yeah. And I'm like, but. but With no confusion ever. Yeah. And I'm like, but, you know, they sell more than that thing. She goes, yeah, but that's the specific thing I'm looking for. So that's, that's the, store. The, that store. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. I that's like fun. that. Makes me laugh. That's all I got. I've run through all my bullet points already. <laughs> Kidding. Oh, well, that's good. Actually, time wise, that worked out. We talk about what you want to talk about. And because elbow, elbow, ready? You want to see what I have written on my, you want me to tell you what I have written? Yeah. I have not a backtrack, but I was like, talk about Matt Rife clip, Thanksgiving in LA. I elbowed him on by accident and gave her a black eye. Hunger Games review. Everything has its own store. Those are just my All right. <laughs> those are my bullet points. There is something so, that I wanted to talk about that has nothing to do with any of the things we just talked about. Not even close. <laughs> I look, I look, uh, this is gonna sound old man stuff. Well, you're an old man, so that works out. But <sighs> what? Older gentleman? No, I'm not old. Vagina neck? No, <laughs> I mean, I'm, kinda. I'm gonna need some new material from you every week. Pops? Man. No, not new. 
President Snow, because you're old and gray. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that one. That was a good one. Um, okay. I do think that, y- y- you know, it, it, the, it's going to, and I will say the TikTok of it all, there's going to be a reckoning in America. N- and not far off. We've fallen off in science and math. And, and by the way, science and math guys, science and math is what this table, this microphone, this computer, the car, science and math. Correct. This is, wh- this is where it all is, right? Right. And um, I will say uh, the world's obsession with celebrity will keep America near the top only for so long because our our entertainment is more worldwide than anybody else right right our music our actors is way more worldwide than anybody else right but with that i think comes a lot of pitfalls man and one of them being and by the way myself included people ask me opinions on things in their personal lives and i'm like you don't know me and the only reason you're asking me is because I, I'm, you, you know, I do stand-up comedy or, right. or right? I'm a, a public figure. And I use that in, in air quotes. Um, and so I think the, I think loving art is cool. I think the importance we put on these people, like, man, I met a bunch of people in this business who have such a crazy attitude. And I'm like, your job is to pretend to, to be, be somebody, somebody else. else. Jinx. Why does that, why do you think that gives you this self-worth and the reason this crazy, like you're better than everybody else and this attitude when you walk in. And the reason is, is because that's what society portrays them as. Yeah. Let's, yeah, let's them be. Right. And that's what people give them of themselves. Well, this, I'm, I, I want to know your opinion on this. A, there is a Harvard course that is covering all things Taylor Swift. Okay. And by the way, let me just go on record before the Swifties come at me. Love Taylor Swift. Not only do I love Taylor Swift, I have loved everything about her for a long time. She produces her own shit. She writes her own shit. She is a fucking artist. She writes songs for other yeah, absolutely. Other artists. I'm sure there are songs that I don't know, but like Better Man, which uh, Little Big Town sings, she wrote mm-hmm. like very Prince-ish. And I'm not comparing her to Prince, although who knows, by the time she's done, she's a young lady. Her... Stop it. Just her, her library is going to be crazy. Probably. No, not Prince, not to the level of Prince. And for me, Prince is maybe... Five... I want you to think of this, and I'm going to get back to this. If you had to pick one artist, band or artist, you could only listen to their music for the rest of your life. J. Cole. See, I'm picking the I'm picking the Beatles because their library is varied. Picking J. Cole. Just but, because but he, to me, Prince is second. <coughs> J. I'm Cole. Picking, I'm picking J. Cole. Yeah. I, it, the reason with the problem with picking someone like J. Cole is that music's going to be the same. <coughs> like the like and the and the Beatles. They're they you know from yesterday to helter skelter to the it, the Indian music to I want to hold your hand it's all different and I feel like picking a J Cole in Prince's music is different you know uh, he went wonder, from I, funk to I, dirty I, I, I to, would I would understand that with like most rappers and most stuff like nowadays yeah Cole's discography is a little more obviously he's got a little more soul in his discography. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So there's a couple albums that really just don't even have bangers. They're more soul and like, uh, like heartfelt and emotion and societal. So like that's for me why I would pick Cole because he's got like he's got songs not only with like Drake and Young Thug and Gunna, but he's got songs with TLC and and Janae Aiko and and a bunch of other people that kind of give him a mixture in his genre. So. Okay, um, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I think I probably would have guessed that you picked. And also, him saying for all the Swifties don't come at him, he likes Taylor Swift. I don't. So we'll leave it at that. Oh, shit. Comment section about to be in three, two, And and I'm not saying I don't like her as a person. 
Um, I think her music's all right. What? I think I think there are some songs that I hear that definitely are catchy and get stuck in my head. Can I tell you what I don't like about Taylor Swift the most? Yeah, her fan base. Whoa, yo, everybody, that wasn't me. No, this this could be me. For me, it's <laughs> for me. For me, it's like wait, I'm part of her fan base. Yeah, but you're not. I'm not a Swifty. You're yeah. not a Swifty. Mm -hmm. Just like you're not like you're not I'm one not of the part of Beehive. You're not one of the Beehives. Exactly. Yeah. Look. I just like that fucking Matt Wright clip. I can like whatever music that I choose to like. Okay. When I tell people or some pe people are like, you don't like Taylor Swift. Like, how could you not like Taylor Swift? She's the greatest artist of all time and this and that. And you're trying to shove her music down my throat or you're getting mad at me at my choice of music. We're going to, we're not going to be friends. By the way. But all the way, I'm also going to say this. I like Beyonce more than I like Taylor Swift. Hands fuck down. you. No way. Hands down. No way. Really? Hands down. Well, Beyonce's, her music is kind of more like the music that I like. I will tell you this. I like Miley better than either one of them, but. That's fine. That's, that's my. That's fine. But uh, for me. You know, like, I'm a Miley. Oh, I know. Yeah. I don't know. Is there a term for like a Swifty, but as far as a Miley fan? The Wrecking Balls? That I would be in those wrecking balls, dude. <laughs> Whoa, pause. <laughs> <laughs> I am a pause. wrecking ball. Well, we've got to think of a name for the Miley side. The Miley, yeah. not the Miley's. Uh, the MCs? Nope. It has to be something with like, yeah. Well, it has we'll to be Swifty, Beehive. Beehive. Um, I don't mind wrecking balls, except that is like. Let's think about this. If you have a suggestion for yeah. what Miley's fans should be called. Yeah, but that's that's the only thing for me is like, I just think her fan base and look, <laughs> I guess I'm just not that big of a fan of any artists, but when I legit see those videos of girls at the Eras tours crying song after song after song after song, I'm like, look, I know music has helped a lot of people in life and I know music has helped me a lot in life. Never to a certain point at that point to where I am crying for three hours. Me neither. Screaming it. But also like they but, said, they also like the videos, they sound so surprised when songs come on. Like they don't already know it's fucking coming. Like, I don't know, man. Like for me, it's just, it's a personal thing. And look, love the music you want to love. But don't hate people for the not liking the music that you like or I'm, thinking that it's not good. That I want to say all this, fun. dude, and I agree with you. But she's awesome. Let me just let me just read this, and then let me get your opinion. Okay. There's a new Harvard course covering all things Taylor Swift, right? Um, one of Harvard's English professors joined us on Tuesday on TMVD to discuss the class she'll be heading up. Next semester called Taylor Swift and Her World, which she made very clear will put an emphasis on the literary merit behind T. Swift's art. Okay. So what, she's going to analyze lyrics and stuff like that? Okay. Like what? Do you want me to keep reading or you want me to just give you my idea keep, real quick? Keep reading. Okay. I just need a little more context for what this is going to be. Okay. Hey, hey, but let me just say real quick, I, there's no arguing to me how great of an she is and the influence she holds. 100%. The problem I have is that we keep, we're put, I, I still think we're putting too much, by getting a course at Harvard, we're putting too much importance on famous people. Like I said, man. When they're just regular people. With like a whole said, bunch man, of money. Yo, where we're getting away from science and math, right? Okay. Which is what life is, science and math. It's obvious from the video, but the professor self-professed Swift, Swifty. Um, self-professed Swifty? Yeah. She, so she's just taking she it into her She explains to us that Taylor's work and fandom are very much worthy of study. Disagree. In fact, because her personal life is so tied up in the songwriting, that means, because they're, they're going to cover Travis Kelsey too, who she dates will get some attention in the class. Like they already don't get enough. Uh, they probably won't spend too much time on Travis, um, but that he's involved. Okay. Anyway, Harvard isn't the only higher ed institution that's doing this for Tay Tay for what it's worth. University of Florida, Arizona state. I, here is the thing for me, by the way, gentlemen, there should be a couple of you signing up for that class. Why you want to be uh, the ratio 
if you're a smart guy and you want to meet some people your freshman year and get ratioed, <laughs> sign up for the Swift class. I think you're probably right. <laughs> sign up for the. It's like the, it's like in the middle school when I was the guy who was like, I want to go to PE, and then like eight of my straight friends were like, we're doing dance, and I was like, fucking why? Ten years later, I know why. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kudos to those dudes. <laughs> Listen. But, but gentlemen, get on that shit. <laughs> yeah, that is not a bad... <laughs> no, it's not. Because you could act like you're a Swifty just to be in that class, not care, and just, you know, yeah. socialize. I, I just... I want to know everyone's opinion. And I'm, I'm having... This is the first time speaking it out loud, so I'm, gonna, I'm having a hard time figuring out how I want to go about this. But I think the importance that's put on celebrity in our country is not a good thing. No. I I think the people looking to celebrity for guidance and for advice is not a good thing. I would tell you this, most celebrities I know are fucked up. Facts. Most celebrities I know are not who you think they are. A hundred percent. I would say this, actors in particular are and actresses are not allowed. It's not good for business. As an actor, you saw those people who got booted off a scream for posting something about the Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict. Yeah, the, okay. the media said something, but it was yeah. Okay, but 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 my point is for actors because there's huge corporations on top of them who need to sell ads and need to sell tickets. You're not allowed to express right your opinion you because know? because to everybody else you're not a person. You're a subject. It's it's not it's not that. It's, no, no, I it's mean like the, the huge conglomeration. No, I mean like the actors to like 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 the actors to the giant conglomerates and like the agents and the and the and the production companies like they don't care what they're really doing for their, their personal life. Are. Yeah, mm -hmm. or opinions as long as it's not affecting what the they're doing. It's, the, it's it's just about money. You're working for somebody else. You're right. real, unless you're a huge actor. You're not allowed to have opinions or it's not encouraged to put them out there. Right, right, right. Ask any closeted Republican actor, right? Which there are a lot of. Yeah, I'm sure there are, man. I'm sure. And even for those of you wondering about me, about my political affiliation, I think they're both party. Both parties are dumb as fuck. <laughs> I think the fact that the best we can do is these, is these two old fucks. <laughs> I just like, it's so beyond me. We're the greatest country in the world. And we got two grandpas who just, who both have their own problems. Yeah. Oh my fucking God. I wouldn't let either one of them drive me to the supermarket. I wouldn't let either of Are them in my, I wouldn't let either of them in me. my house. I would let them in my house, grandpa, but they, they wouldn't be able to make it up the stairs. <laughs> so you know what I mean? I'd have to cut their meat for them. These old fucks. But, but, um, my point is this. I think we put too much um, merit and weight. Um, and, and there's no doubt Taylor Swift has a shit ton of influence. But yeah. Right? I, I think we put too much merit and weight. And if we start teaching these classes and they're getting, these are the classes that are getting press, I think we're moving further and further away from the nitty gritty of what really keeps your, makes the country truly great. Right. Right? It makes the country uh, stay, makes us stay, at, in my mind, the greatest, maybe ever. I don't know. You can't, it's not an empire, but whatever no. it is, right? Uh, 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 this little run the, that the United States has been on. But this is the kind of shit that I think. Under, undermines. It. Yeah. This is the kind of stuff, yo, know, when you've got emergency, when you've got emergency room doctors go, doing TikTok dances before surgery, which you do. Yo, if I was under the knife and I was asleep and I woke up and someone was like, yeah, I saw your TikTok doctor doing a dance, your, your doctor doing a TikTok dance before, I would fucking go off. I'd probably sue for gross negligence. Yo, I don't, I don't need to see my doctor on TikTok at all. No. Do your fucking job. Yeah. I don't want, you know, there is a doctor, a holistic doctor. I love so many things that he says, but he does the duck face. 
into the camera. I can't take you seriously, bro. No, Are you not. fucking duck facing, you grown ass man, doctor? But this is the story of a girl. Where we're going. <sighs> Sorry. This is the road. This, these are the classes now. You, how to go, I'm sure their class is being taught how to go viral. Yo, how, how about how to fucking write it? Yo, how about, how, could you write me a cursive F if you needed to? No, that's a no. Maybe. Wait. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Not saying that anybody needs to, 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 to learn cursive. That's dumb. But point being, man. Our, the, our history the, the, uh, of our country, people don't know. Yeah, I they don't, we don't know this, all the states and all the capital. And I, I, I group myself into that. They're so, they, they don't know probably the difference between what a senator and a governor is and what they do. I don't either. These are all, but we're teaching a we Taylor gotta, Swift oh, TikTok class. I, I mean, Taylor Swift. I really, I really am on the board of like, the education system right now in the States almost seems pointless if you're going, unless you're going to be like a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer, or things that require you to understand a certain level of something for your profession. But stuff like that, like, and also, you know, like Matthew McConaughey is a professor at the University of Texas, right? And he's, he's teaching like a, like a, like a film class or, or whatnot. Some people don't even know who the fuck he is, which I think is the funniest thing. Yeah. I'm like, I, I, I just... I just think there are so many things being taught in school today that aren't truly going to help us later in life. Like if y'all would have taught me about taxes in school, for sure, I'm in for that. Like something that's actually going to help the modern average day person. We've said this before, but there are two things in high school that I think should be taught. One, how to, how to be good with money. And two, every high school, you should be able to, you should be, you should learn how to change your own oil. And change a fucking tire in your car. It's a good, it's a good and, life lesson to have. It, dude, it's it's real life skills. Now, I understand the Taylor Swift course will be an elective, and I, as I've been talking about it, I realize that I probably should have thought this out and and got and really nailed down what my points were because I'm all I, the way my brain works. I have so many things yeah. flying through. That I'm not sure I made my point clear, except this. To me, this class illustrates the uh, how much weight we put on celebrity, how much importance we put on celebrity, and I, in my mind, how dangerous that is. Because what you have now is six and seven and eight and nine year olds. Not they just want to be TikTok famous. Yeah, they just want to be YouTube famous. And that is a short shelf life, everybody. And the people, and, 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 and yo, dude, I want to do a science show. One of my goals is to make science cool again. I want to do a science show. Get Bill Nye. Bill he, Nye. He's Bill not, Nye. not cool. Whoa, 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 whoa. You clipped this, clipped the start from this. Did you just say Bill Nye isn't cool? Not cool. This is going to be a worse post for you than the Swifties or the I Netflix. like him. He's not cool. Disagree. Bill Nye is cool. Bill, 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 Bill. You're telling Bill Nye is what cool. What is that? What do people chant for him when he walks down the street? Yeah, that's that's his it's in his the Bill Nye the science guy. It's in his theme song. Where literally that that they go they go Bill Nye the science guy and then in the background you literally just go Bill 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 but no no By the no, way, no you're no. proving my point that he's not cool. That's he, the dumbest fucking theme song you've ever mind. is the coolest motherfucker. Bill Nye dude Neil Grass DeGrasse Tyson, cool. Bill Nye the science guy, cool. Not cool. Stop it. Knowledgeable. Stop it. Bill Nye's cool. Bill Nye. Been How cool. do you define cool? Bill Nye. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Nye is cool. I don't care what you or anybody says. Bill Nye, if you see this, which I know you won't, I rock with you, and I have been, and me and all my homies love Bill Nye. Are you crazy? Bill Nye was here you before. You follow Bill Nye on socials? Oh, yeah. You do? Bill Nye. Pull him up. Bill Nye was here before Neil deGrasse Tyson was. Bill Nye. Bill Nye was not pre-Neil no, deGrasse Tyson. Bill Nye is my generation's Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil deGrasse Tyson is my generation's Neil deGrasse Tyson. That was dumb. Are you telling me you think Neil deGrasse Tyson came after Bill Nye? 
Are you saying to me that you think Bill Nye not only is cooler than Neil, I don't even know if I'm saying DeGrasse right. Neil DeGrasse Tyson, you're right. You think Bill Nye not only is cooler than Bill, you think he knows more than Neil DeGrasse? I think they know more about different things. Isn't Neil deGrasse Tyson more of a cosmos and a universe guy? He's a scientist. He's obviously a very knowledgeable guy. But Bill Nye is more like, he's more into not the cosmos. uh, Are we, so you're, you're telling me that Bill Nye is cooler than Neil deGrasse Tyson. I never said that. But I know, I, but you're the one who's saying Bill Nye, the science guy, is not cool. I don't think cool is the word I would use to describe. Cool is the word I would use for him. But you're clearly wrong. I would probably, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now that a lot of people would disagree on you. Just disagree with you on that. Yeah. I, oh, oh I'm, this is going to be the first clip that I post from this podcast. And I can guarantee you. People are going to disagree with you and be like, how do you not find Bill Nye the science guy cool? Yo, dude, I want to hear. Are you team Bill Nye or team Neil deGrasse Tyson? Who do you think is going to get more votes? Me. You think people like Bill Nye more than Neil deGrasse Tyson? Does Neil deGrasse Tyson have a theme song where they scream his name? and He doesn't have to. Bill Nye didn't have to, but he did. Bill, 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 Bill. Oh, fucking <laughs> that's so stupid. Fucking love Bill Nye. Let me Nye. see his page. Are you, I'm going to... Is that his Instagram page? He's old as shit now, I'm not going to lie. But I love Bill Nye. You actually do follow him. Of course I follow Bill Nye. I think, Bill Nye's my god. Dude, look at this dinosaur. I do love his bow ties. Yeah. And I am a fan of just, I do like him. I just don't think cool is the right word. Well, I don't, I guess your definition of cool might be wrong then. He, he's like a science, dude, he plays Frisbee. Yeah, he does. I love Bill Nye. I, I got nothing... I, because because I'm going to tell you also why I like Bill Nye so much. I can't tell you how many times in middle school in a science class where we were like, oh. God damn, the font's so small on your phone. You're old. Jeez. But so I, I can't, can't, I can't tell you that. how many times I've walked into a science class and I've seen that old little TV with a VHS tape popped up in front of that classroom. And every time we'd walk in there, everybody would be stoked. You know why? Because Bill Nye was coming on. And we would have a grand old uh, fucking time. You crazy. Jacob Wolf, what do you want to tell? What do you want to tell everybody? Uh, and by the way, I'm so sorry I brought this Taylor Swift thing up. Not my best. I, I thought I was going to uh, be able to generate some points that I really thought could hit home, but I, I never fully articulated them in the way that I was hoping to. I so. think one point I would have for that that I think you you were trying to get across is also with having an elective like that, you're taking so much attention away from any other elective that might possibly be beneficial to the kids in a society rather than learning about Taylor Swift's life and her lyrics, which you could do on the internet. And by the Thank way, you for playing. I guess I understand it's an elective and nobody's majoring in Taylor Swift. And although if you they could, they would. Yeah. And maybe I'm maybe I'm old man in it and being like, these kids today, I just feel like we're just no. in general. Focusing on the wrong things. I would agree with that. I would. I would. I would agree. Next week, by the way, I really want. The next week, I really want to talk. About, I get some health stuff. I want to talk about. Okay. Um, what do you want to tell everybody? By the way, I'm throwing away these shoes. I know you told me. Okay. Uh, by the time you guys hear this, we will be in Kansas City. Yes. So if you're in Kansas City, by the time you hear this, if there are tickets still available, please come see us. Please come see a show. Come have some fun. Um, uh, I they come see the Friday Night Late Show. There will be a good chance that some of us, and if I mean some of us, I mean all three of us will be on drugs. So that should be a really grand old time. Um, I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving holiday. I know sometimes the holidays are a drama for some people or are uh, you know, not as fun as they should be for everybody, but I hope everybody had a, a good and a safe holiday with another one right around the corner. Um, I hope y'all, it's not even December yet, but I hope everybody has another safe uh, holiday, whether it's uh, you celebrate Hanukkah, you celebrate Christmas, you celebrate Kwanzaa, whatever you're celebrating coming up in this coming year. Or if you're not celebrating, please be safe. Um, and let's end this year strong. Uh, ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates and tickets uh, for any upcoming shows. I don't think we have anything on there for the new year quite yet. Um but stay tuned. We're going to be December 4th is when we're dropping all the new shows. Great. Um, Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. You guys know the vibes. That's always what it is. Bill and I, till the day we die, 
Um, <laughs> you heard me. Or I guess until the day he dies, <laughs> because that's probably going to be sooner than me. <laughs> um, you know, tell somebody you love them. Do something nice for them. Uh, we love you guys. Thank you guys for always stopping by and supporting and uh, watching this, listening to this. We love every single one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me just say, as I look more closely, I'm a fan of the glasses. It's the glasses. They're too big. It's the glasses, mustache, jean jacket combo that I really think I like. The glasses look too big for me. They are too big for you. They're just not too big for me. No, they're too big for you. You know how I know they're not too big for me? They're on my face. That All right, everybody. the worst reasoning I've ever heard. Hey, they're not too big because they're fit on my face. Do they, though? Because I can... Do they overlap so much past your face? It's crazy. Yeah, but this is the way they're supposed to look. These are the Dahmers. Yeah, big head, big glasses. I guess it works out. I don't. If right, I had, wait pretty... a second. <laughs> if I had a big head, they wouldn't look this big. I have a small. You have a bigger head than I do. Disagree. We have the same size head. We've talked about this. Okay, then when you call me big head. All right, long head. I do have a long head. <laughs> yeah. Long head, wider Giant, glasses. By the, way, by the way, by the way, dude. Long head doesn't sound great. <laughs> For you, it does. Yeah, dude. I don't. I don't really like long great. head, vagina neck. We got I a lot of good don't nicknames like coming being up for referred it. to as long head or vagina neck. So what I, about, I would, what about long vagina neck head? Oh, that went crazy. That went way out of pocket. Um, what if you? What if it was long neck vagina head? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> long neck vagina head. Thank you for turning into another. Wait, I'm not done. Hold on. Oh. Thank you for tuning into another episode. What about of hey vagina Man? neck long head? Vagina head long head neck. No, because your neck's not that long. V vagina long head vagina neck is way better. All right, y'all. This has been another episode of Hey Man. Thank you for tuning in. From Jacob Boomer, from from the old man to long head vagina neck. We are pre we appreciate you guys stopping by. Vagina neck. Sign us off. <laughs> <laughs> Deuces, everybody. <laughs> brain. I'm fidgety. That's just kind of the person I am. So I know if I'm on stage with no hat on, I'm going to be running my hand through my hair every 37 seconds. Mm. And that's going to get distracting. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I think you should run it through that luscious hair. People are going to like that. Yeah, but I, I, And then slow-mo it. But it's going to bug me knowing I'm doing it every 35 seconds. You should run your hand through your hair in slow motion. And then uh, I'll have the DJ play. Oh, yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man. So we, you are a Sasquatch guy. I'm a cryptid guy, or cryptoid guy, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. The cryptids and cryptoids, I don't think the Sasquatch is technically, I don't know, technically a cryptid? You know what I'm talking about. I don't like, know what a cryptid is. So a cryptid is like a skinwalker, or a mothman, or the chupacabra, or... Legend. Mythical. Right. But they're called cryptids. Okay. So, for me, I'm a big cryptid guy. You know why? Because why the fuck not? I'm in a shirt that says, let's summon demons. Um, and it's got pentagrams all over it. Yeah, that's and I'm also in a Winnie the Pooh uh, headband. Winnie the Pooh. 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 Hey man. Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. Hey man.